the persistence of memory or melting watches or soft watches an incredible small oil on canvas painted in 1931 by Catalan painter Salvador Dali only 24 by 33 centimeters with Dali signature on the lower left corner almost imperceptible since 1934 the painting has been in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. We are therefore talking about what is maybe one of the most famous representative and iconic paintings by Dali a work painted only at 27 years of age in 1931, technically perfect and refined, hyper-realistic, almost invisible brush, photographic, technically a neo-Renaissance painting. In the Lee, we can find the perspective of Piero della Francesca, and his way of representing landscape. But on the other hand, here we see Adali in his full surrealist imagines. Two years earlier of this painting, Dali had performed with Luis Buñuel, Le Chien and the Loup. This is not a trivial detail, because the persistence of memory is an epithet of the world that appears in the film. The materialized dream, capricious, a new oniric reality, the reality of dreams turned into reality, a reality that is based on Freud's theories, admired by the surrealists. Likewise, the Lee takes elements of reality, as he always did, and dissociates them into a kind of collective ready-made, creating a new image that moves away from reality. The painting reflects antithetical elements, the softness against the hardness, and at the same time combats normally solid elements into soft ones like watches. Dali developed a surrealistic image of soft, melting pocket watches. The general interpretation of the work is that the soft watches are a rejection of the assumption that time is rigid or deterministic. There is a reflection on the passage of time, slow or fluid time, which persists in the memory, the persistence of memory. Some interpret it linked to Einstein's theory of relativity, but in this interpretation, the automatistic principle of the least surrealism fails. A soft watch is soft because he wanted it soft and there is no more. And actually, it's simpler because Dali is known to have been inspired by a melting camembert. Perhaps on a picnic in Cap de Creus, the Lee melted a camembert in the sun. It will be normal in a Port de Gat summer. The north coast of Catalonia, in Cadaqués, Alt Empordà, is always present in the Lee's work. Since the house in Port de Gat, which I have behind here, was bought in 1930. Port Ligat, next to Cadaqués, 
still preserves the Dali house today and the air of peace and absolute marine silence that it always have had for the Lee. At the bottom of the picture, we can see a cliff in front of the sea. It's the island of Port Ligat, which we can see here behind me, possibly portrayed by the Lee right there or on a postcard he had. It's not clear where the Lee painted the small canvas, but it's supposed to be in Port Ligat itself. That inspiring landscape and above all the most surreal end of Cap de Creus, the place of Tudela, Parache de Tudela, were a great inspiration for all of his work. Let's go now to the Parache de Tudela. This landscape curved by the wind with capricious forms that today we would call the Linian but which are logical prior to it, were very important in the Lee work. El Parache de Tudela is an area of Cap de Creus with unique geological formations and flora throughout the Iberian Peninsula. Its arid landscape with little vegetation is formed by large rocks that take the most extravagant forms thanks to the force of the Tramontana, the north wind that blows in very strong gusts in that area. It's a landscape fruit of the erosion of the wind and the sea. A landscape that has something surreal in its forms, a natural whim for the Lee who copied those shapes in his paintings. The place was always an obsession for the Lee. On October 6, 1934, the Lee himself gave a lecture at the Defunct Libreria Catalonia on Surrealism, entitled The Surrealist and Phenomenal Mystery of the Beside Table. During the talk, the painter made the following description of the Tudela plan, following the coast down from Cap de Creus and towards Port de la Selva, there is a desert place, whitely mineral, where the sterile convulsions of a mineral geological delirium are immobilized in the vibrant desolation of Mica ruins. We are in front of one of the strangest rocks in the area. This was inspiration for the Lee, for his great masturbator. And likewise, we find it transformed into a kin of sofa in the shape of a face in the center of the persistence of memory. A sofa face, a sleeping face, some say a self-portrait of the Lee, although he has something sexual, erotic, as always in the Lee. Beneath it, a kin of stone penetrates it. It's a sexuality only pointed and not as obvious as in the great masturbator. Time passes, but the memory persists. It's not Einstein, it's not relativity. It's the Lee spending his best times in the calm of Port Yigat. It's the Lee enjoying life in nature, in sexuality, in his 27 years while the clock is ticking. Time paces and a fly sways on a clock. Time paces and ends, as in Le Chien and the Lou, lent on a clock. They are contradictory emblems, the fixed and the volatile or mobile, contrast, surreal, iconic, 
Nor is there much meaning behind it. It's the Lee. He is an automatist. It's the careful aesthetics of the canvases and the photographic technique of the provocateur of figures. An orchestra man, a theater man, life made theater, a Lope de Vega out of place. Salvador Dalí.